Hey everyone, I wanted to give you a little trip down memory lane and show you some of the work that I've had published over the years. This is just part one of this little video because I have a lot of things to show you and after moving some of the stuff has gotten a little bit misplaced so we're gonna start way 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 back way back this is one of my very first jobs in around well this one's particularly from 2005 but I know I started working for official Xbox magazine probably in about 2003 so what I would do for official Xbox magazine is little illustrations on the letters page so if we jump on in here you can have an example of the type of work that I was doing just a little funny kind of cartoon based on one of the readers letters that they wrote in and I would have pretty good art direction they told me what to draw pretty much exactly which was totally fine by me uh, it makes my job easier if I don't have to think of what to do at least I think that's how, this is a long time ago. Um, this is from 2005, so I don't really remember exactly how the briefs went, to be quite honest with you. But I got this job because I had a portfolio website and I basically just emailed the art director of the magazine and they were really kind enough to give me a chance. Even though I don't think my work was amazing, <laughs> You'll see improvements as we go along, I'm sure. So this was one of them. And so every month I would do one of these. And I also got the opportunity to do a feature editorial illustration as well. Not all the time, but every couple of months I would get a chance to do that. And wow, look at how old that artwork is. <laughs> but I love doing these little halo figures. They were kind of cool. Yeah, just a really good experience with Xbox Magazine. So it was always one of the jobs I look fondly back towards. There's another half page illustration. Uh, something about pro gaming. So yeah, I mean, can you tell that it's my artwork? I don't know. It's pretty old school. Very cartoony. Oh my goodness. That was... I do remember doing this. I can't remember the character's name. Conquer. Conquer Life and Reloaded. Mm. This is going, this magazine is for the original Xbox. So this is going way back when. I've got one more here to show you in. What is in this one? Ah, there you go. Speaking of original Xbox, <laughs> just a little caricature of an actual Xbox machine. Uh, good times. So I learnt a lot about um, working to, towards deadlines and things for this sort of job. And it was just a really good experience to kickstart my career doing things like this. And I worked for a number of other magazines as well. So perhaps we'll get to that in another video. Now I wanted to show you a little bit of my comic book work. Now I haven't done much, granted. But I did this little short story for... Viper Comics. The year, I don't really remember what year it was, so I'm just gonna have a look. This was in 2004. Okay, there you go. So let me backtrack just a little bit. I read comics when I grew up. I was obsessed in my teenage years. By this stage, I was in my 20s. I was probably like 22, 23, 23, I think. Um, so I wasn't really reading a lot of comics, but when I went into the comic book store one day, I saw this. Dead at 17 by Josh Howard. And the art style and the design of the cover was so simple, but it was very, very eye-catching. And yeah, it just it just caught my attention. So I became an instant Josh Howard and Dead at 17 fan. And I reached out to them and did some fan art for Dead at 17, which kind of led me to be a little bit more involved in Viper Comics. And so there's a little bit of a history, a little bit of a story with Viper Comics, which we'll get into another time. But I got the opportunity to work on Rough Cut, which is a little bit of, it's an anthology of short stories um, based on the characters from the main series. Now, I will just profess to say it's obviously black and white, which is a bit of a bummer, 
but also the deadlines were really tight and there was no pay for this. This was all done completely free, which I do not recommend at all. But like I said, maybe we'll get into that topic another time. So yeah, it. I can't remember what the deadlines were like, to be honest, but I feel like it was probably a couple of weeks to pencil, ink, color, all the whole lot. It's probably only about five pages long, but I was pretty proud of it at the time and I had a really, a really great time. Um, finally getting into comics, telling a little bit of story, working on my panels and the act of storytelling. So I really, really enjoyed this. And yeah, look, the art is not fantastic, but I still think there is, there's some promise there. There's some expression. I think the storytelling is okay. I haven't really read it properly for a long time, but yeah, you can definitely see that the art style, the anatomy and whatnot needs improvement, but it's good to look back on this stuff. It's a lot of speech bubbles. <laughs> oh yeah, these panels were more my favorite with this um, kiss. He's getting enveloped by this demon, basically. Uh, kudos to the writing, you know, that's the writing made that. I didn't come up with that, obviously, but good stuff. I had a lot of fun. That's it. That's it for me in this book. <laughs> now, after that, I did another bit of work for Viper Comics. Uh, Josh Howard wanted to do this book called Sasquatch, which is another anthology book. It's quite thick. It's got a lot of work in here, a lot of really talented people. Um, and I did a short story right at the back here and well it's in color which is nice but again I think the deadline was super tight so it's kind of lacking a bit there's a like you know lacking of details and in, in the backgrounds which I don't particularly like uh, but again like just getting to tell a story was really enjoyable uh, should I tell you a bit about the story in a nutshell, basically, this guy is going on a camping trip with his girlfriend, which is all fun and games and whatnot. He has a flashback. We get a flashback of what he did in this forest as a kid, as like a Cub Scout or whatever. Uh, they actually found a Sasquatch that was dying and they stole a trophy, which was one of his toes. <laughs> and he kept it all that time. Uh, anyway, Turns out that the girl was actually brought up by these Sasquatches. She was a Sasquatch girl, I suppose. And this was her way of taking revenge. So she found them, she hunted them down, she romanced him, she brought him to the forest, and she they kill him. <laughs> Good times, right? I really like that panel there. Actually, it's a little bit hard to see, to be honest. But uh, in this panel, you can see there's nothing in the trees. Then there's some lightning and you kind of get to see all these eyes watching the campsite. And then that's when the Sasquatch has come. So yeah, it was again, a really good experience to try my hand at storytelling. Just a quick short story, not paid at all. Keep that in mind. Don't do paid, don't do free jobs guys. Just don't do it. All right, moving on. This is jumping quite forward actually wait not that one this one in 2010 i finally i started doing conventions and i thought well i should probably put like a little homemade sketchbook together of my pinup work which is you know leaves something to desire <laughs> the um the quality of the work is questionable at best but it was what I was doing at the time. And, you know, I was, I was quite proud of putting a little book together. It was good fun. I also made a print on demand version in hardcover, which is pretty cool. Same content, I think. There might be a couple of extra bits in it. So yeah, so this was about 2010. I don't think you can get these anywhere anymore. 
uh, it was a very, very limited kind of thing. Before I get ahead of myself, I should show you the next book that I did, which was called Omnibus, The Art of Martin Abel. That's me. Um, I was planning to do a series of books, so we've got number one there, obviously. This was published by Trinquet Publishing in America by Alberto Ruiz. Absolute legend for um, hooking this up with me. But the idea of this book was just put all the best work that I think I've done in the last, say, 10 years up to this point. So it's, there's no, there's no text or anything. It's just a big mash of colorful artwork, mostly pinups, but there is some, a little bit of comic stuff in here too. And I don't think you can get this book, but there is a PDF version on my website. So if you're interested in browsing through this in a bit more detail, feel free to go to martinableart.com and have a look. So yeah, gosh, my art has hopefully progressed. There's still ones I like. I still love this, this girl. She's still one of my favorites. And I redid her in Nightmares and Visions. Um, but if, actually, if you're not in here somewhere is, find it. We were talking about Dead at 17. Uh, this was a cover, I think it was a paid cover I did for one of their um, offshoots of Dead at 17 called Dead at 17 Protectorate. And this was the original fan art that I sent in to Josh Howard and Viper Comics, which kind of started that whole journey. I also did a cover for Devil's Due Press, Hack Slash. So yeah, I mean, I still love looking at this book. I mean, I think the colors are beautiful, but I can see, I can see all the bad things, you know, the anatomy problems and all the things that I don't like. <laughs> so yeah, so that was 2012, beautiful hardcover book. I was so stoked to actually get this made. And then moving on from there, we have a 2013 DIY sketchbook, so <laughs> a bit of a difference in quality there, but this is just a really quick, quickly put together, ooh, flyers, book, ooh, a sketch, that's interesting. Looks like a bit of a photocopy job, to be honest, so very DIY of just a bunch of sketches. Um, actually, we can talk about this now because this leads into something else. Some other published work I did. I scored a really cool gig with the Australian Tattoo and Body Art Expo of doing their promotional posters, basically. Um, promotional artwork that they would use on everything. It was really insane the amount of places that I saw them use this artwork. So that turned into this. This is just the um, the tag that you had to wear to get into the show, which I kept. But yeah, I think she turned out pretty sweet. A little tattooed space girl. Um, but this ended up on billboards, just massive, massive posters of the show. It was on taxis driving around Sydney on the back of the back of the car advertising the show. It was just everywhere. It was crazy to see my artwork published in such a big format. It was really cool. I believe it was all vector as well, actually. So it could be printed at any size, which they really took advantage of. So, uh, and then this was the, the other one, Sailor Girl. Very cool. I wish I had something else that was, um, Oh, I guess it's here. Yeah. Next, we have my big, 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 big project called Nightmares and Visions. I always wanted to make a pinup book um, with a sort of personal kind of twist, um, just to express 
whatever my crazy brain wanted to kind of express through the medium of pinup girls. Um, so that's what this book was, and this was 2015, I believe. A lot of work went into this one. A lot of work, you know, I, I drew all the, um, the borders and everything like that. Painstakingly redrew everything about 20 times. Beautiful intro by my friend John. And so it's very art focused. There's no, there's no text or anything in this. Um, it's all visual. I don't think this book's ever been opened before, so I apologize if it's a bit noisy. Yeah, so I launched this book on Kickstarter way back when. It's pretty successful. Uh, I still have maybe a couple of boxes of this book left. So if you want one, I don't think it's on the store at the moment, but it will be eventually. I'll try and get rid of the, the last books that I have. But yeah, this was a massive learning experience to self-publish this book, essentially. Self-publish a hardcover book of this magnitude and dealing with a Kickstarter, a very successful Kickstarter that took months and months to um, fulfill all the orders. But I would not change a thing because it was an amazing experience. So this was when I was still using Photoshop. In fact, everything you've seen so far is all either traditional or in Photoshop with a Wacom. And this was the death of Photoshop for me. I just put too much into it and uh, drove myself a little crazy. So if you're interested in this book, it is available on the store as a PDF. And it's actually combined with another book, which I will show you. So the guidebook was uh, a side book to this that explains all the backstory, shows you all the sketches and development ideas um, as to where these illustrations came from, what they kind of are trying to convey. And it's a really, it's a much more interesting book, the guidebook, I think. Um, so if you're interested in that, go check it out in the store. There is a PDF version of Nightmares and Visions and the guidebook combined. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, next we have some comic book work again, but this time it's just covers. And around 2013, so we're actually going back in time. Whoops. 2013, I started working for Zenoscope Entertainment, um, doing some covers for them. So this is a Grim Fairy Tales Code Red, Red Riding Hood cover. Um, I, I had a lot of trouble doing these covers, which we'll, we'll talk about in the end, but I think they turned out pretty cool in hindsight. You know, looking back at these, you know, I'm quite proud that I did them. Um, so there's that one. That was one of the first ones I did. Unfortunately, I don't have them all here. So this is just a small selection of the published cover work that I have done. Hellchild the Unholy. That was one of my first um, cityscapes I've ever really attempted to do. I was quite proud of how that turned out. This is one of my favorite covers for Xenoscope. Wonderland 49 cover C. I still really love how it turned out. And I believe I have another version somewhere with gold lettering. But again, where is all my stuff? I don't know. <laughs> That's what happens when you move. I've got a Jungle Book cover. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, Xenoscope are very much known for their sexy ladies. So that was the thing. I was I was happy to get a gig with them. It was a really good learning experience. Um, but I definitely stressed over them so much. I think the pressure really got to me. So they weren't really an enjoyable process because of that. 
But like I said, looking back at them now, it's fun to see them. So there was a lot, a lot of exclusives, not a lot, but a couple of exclusive um, covers for certain events, I think, in conventions. Uh, that's why there's no title on there. But this job in particular was kind of weird because I had to do three versions of this cover. Unfortunately, I only have two. Uh, I think the other version was switching these characters into different characters or reversing them. So I had to change the hair color, change all the clothes. It's quite a process. I still love how this one turned out. And then, yeah, Xenoscope comes into their true form. So my apologies to all the feminists out there. Uh, naked version, almost naked version. But this is also one of my favorite ones because the colors are just, oh, they're just gorgeous. I just love how the colors turned out in this. I mean, look at that mushroom. So yeah, that was 2016 that I did most of my work for Xenoscope. So next I did covers for Aspen Comics, which was really cool um, to get into a company that's a little bit more acclaimed. Uh, and my first cover was for Fathom, which again, like the colors just, they're so, they're so fun. So with Xenoscope, the, the covers were all very random and very pin-uppy. Pretty much nothing, I assume, nothing related to the story inside whatsoever. It's literally just pretty art to get you to buy the comic. So that doesn't sit with me too well. I would prefer to do something that's just more connected to the story. Aspen gave me the opportunity to do that. And that's how we came up with this cover. This was their idea, of course, but it does actually relate to the interior story, which I thought was pretty cool. I also did a Soulfire cover. And a Bubble Gun cover. This is one of my favorite ones, actually. I believe I did the inks traditionally for this. Previously it was all digital, but this one I wanted to do some traditional inking, which I really enjoyed. And there is a couple more, but I don't have them. <laughs> They're lost in a box somewhere, which I'll find eventually. So stay tuned for part two on that. Next we have my most recent art book called Wanderings, which I also kickstarted. And it's just basically a big collection of all my traditional fantasy work. There's lots of stuff in here. And you know, you can really start to see that this is more, more me, what you're kind of used to seeing, uh, playing with watercolors. There's some commissions in here. We have lots of commissions, uh, but lots of like character designs and just playing with story ideas and things like that. So that is actually available on my store if you're interested in that one. Now, coming full circle back to comic books. In the beginning of 2020, I contributed to Australia Burns, which is an anthology of short stories and all the proceeds was going to uh, the bushfire relief fund. We had major bushfires in the in the start very start of 2020 in Australia. Um, I'm not sure a lot of people will remember that now because of the current situation of the world but it was a thing and I really wanted to help out. So I wrote, penciled, inked, coloured a five page story that's in here somewhere. <laughs> Aha, there it is. And I had such a good time making this. Um, I actually have a video on the whole creation of this if you want to check back in my YouTube channel so you can get the full scope, but we're just gonna have a quick look about how it came out in print. And yeah, just seeing this again, just like sets my heart on fire. I should really be doing comics. I know this. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had a blast making this. Making an Australian kind of bush fairy character. 
Not many humans in this one, but... In fact, there's the only humans there. So yeah, just a very short little story. In 2019 or 2020, I can't remember when now, everything's a blur. I was commissioned to do this book, uh, The Beginner's Guide to Fantasy Drawing by 3D Total Publishing. And so I did the cover and I did between a quarter and a half of the book. It's a cute dude. So it starts out with a lot of like fundamentals uh, what kind of equipment you should use. I had to draw all those little things. A little bit weird, but got to do it. Um, color theory. Basics of anatomy. All sorts of cool stuff. Body, shark, body types, whole section on hands, facial expressions, animals, and wizards and stuff, lighting. Yeah, there was a lot of work at this book, um, so I'm quite, I'm still quite proud of it. Love this wizard guy, he's pretty sweet. Um, yes, so this company has actually commissioned me to do a new book or contribute to a new book. Uh, so be on the lookout. I can't really tell you what it is yet, but as soon as I can, I will let you know. Uh, it's going to be a really cool book, I think. So that's it for the video today. I hope you have enjoyed this little peek at some of the published work that I've done over the years. There is plenty more, there's some really cool things that unfortunately I didn't have, so I'm gonna find them and we're gonna make a new video and go down memory lane and show you some of the stuff that I've done. And hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.